Welcome everybody, uh, for this video I'll be discussing and explaining uh, the reaction of ethers with uh, sulfuric acid H2SO4. So let's get to it. Um, there's a few things I want to say before we get into the reaction and the reaction mechanism. Okay, so if you have, um, if you have a primary ether, right? It's primary because both carbons directly attached to the oxygen are primary. So we have primary carbon here and a primary carbon here. The reaction, okay, with H2SO4 will not work, okay? Even if you supply it with as much heat as possible, just the reaction will not work. So H2SO4. Now, what if, if we have a secondary carbon directly attached to the oxygen? Okay, so again, this carbon, oops, this carbon is secondary, this one's primary, okay? And again, we're reacting with H2SO4, right? Reaction will occur, reaction works but you need heat okay need heat okay which is symbolized as delta okay so secondary carbon if you have a secondary carbon present on ether the reaction will work uh, but it needs heat okay so this carbon over here so if you have at least one secondary carbon, again the reaction will work with heat. Um, this carbon over here can be primary or secondary, okay? So in a little bit I'll explain why this carbon cannot be tertiary. Okay, so we're assuming that in every case this carbon over here remains constant. So secondary in a primary or a secondary in a secondary. Um, again the reaction will work if this carbon over here so this carbon we'll write it as C which is referring to that carbon over there can be primary or secondary okay the final thing is if we have a tertiary carbon directly attached to the oxygen okay this is primary this is tertiary okay and again we react with H2SO4 excuse me um, reaction will work and no heat required okay excuse me so now in this case this carbon over here this one where the primary carbon is again that carbon can be primary secondary or tertiary okay so again we're assuming if this remains constant in every case so if you have a tertiary and a primary a tertiary and a secondary or a tertiary and a tertiary reaction works um, no heat required in this case if you have a secondary and a primary or a secondary and a secondary reaction works but it needs heat okay so this is a knowing what type of group you have here and here is only important in regards to if you need heat or not okay because the reaction mechanism and the reaction itself does not depend on this uh, and this they'll follow the same mechanism and that is an E1 which is an elimination okay so um, very important to know okay these things so this just tells you when to use heat and when not to use heat okay and the reason why we can't put tertiary here is that we know that if you have a tertiary carbon reaction requires no heat so if you put tertiary here so secondary and a tertiary it falls into this category okay so then you would need no heat so it only applies to primary and secondary carbons okay so let's go on and uh, let me go and show you guys how to 
uh, do the reaction and reaction mechanism. So we'll work with a tertiary carbon directly attached to the ether. So um, if this is our ether, okay. Let's okay, that's our ether. Again, we're reacting it so plus H2SO4, the product the product of this reaction, so this ether right here. In H2SO4, the product of this reaction will be, before we go on to that, this is a tertiary and this is a primary carbon, right? So again, you don't need no heat in this specific case. So, the product of this reaction will be an alkene and an alcohol, okay? So you'll have an alcohol drawn as such, okay? and you'll have an alkene that looks like this okay so plus you'll have an alkene oops let's fix this a little bit so alkene that looks like that okay one thing you guys need to remember is since this is an E1 elimination right um, there is an there is a carbocation intermediate step so always look out for rearrangements, okay? Always look out for rearrangements. So there's a few, two things I really want to stress out is look out for rearrangements. Look out rearrangements. And the second thing, um, you want to always form the most substituted uh, carbon, okay? I mean, excuse me. You want to form the most substituted alkene. So, Zaitsev's rule. So, these are very important things that you need to be aware of, okay? So, Zaitsev's rule, which says that you want to form the most substituted alkene, okay? And you also want to look out for rearrangements to f so that you can form the most substituted alkene product. So again, this will be our model uh, reaction and then I'll use this specific example to show you guys how to do the reaction mechanism. So let's go ahead and erase this. I have more space to work with.